Thanks, everyone. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to see some friendly names on the screen, um, and we look forward to making connections with the rest of you. Tonight, we've got an amazing presentation prepared, Ergonomics 101, Working From Home. Um, I'm sure a lot of us are not quite prepared to continue to still be working at home, but rest assured, I have got Jason Varghese, our subject matter expert on the line, um, who will be taking us through some great information tonight. So for those of you who don't know us, um, Hansberger Physio Plus is all about helping build a better you. Whether you have a new injury, you want to take your game to the next level, or you're just finding it harder to move than you used to, we're committed to helping you live better, feel better, work better, and perform better. We believe that personal empowerment is key to living a healthy life. We have many practices across the greater Toronto area, including Markham, Aurora, Burlington, Stouffville. We also offer home visits and we have a number of corporate co and clients, including Apotex, Sanofi Pasteur, the Toronto Cricket Club, Ovenberg Golf Club, and new to the Hansberger family is William Othler Health Systems, which is super exciting. And we've got a very robust team, registered physiotherapists, registered massage therapists, certified athletic therapists, personal trainers, osteopathic manual practitioners, you name it, we've got it. We do a lot of things for a lot of people, but tonight, most importantly, um, I have, drum roll please, Jason Varghese, occupation, certified athletic therapist and certified kinesiologist. He's also the director of our industrial programs. So he specializes in ergonomics, um, people's workstations, helping them work properly and work effectively. So I really encourage you guys tonight, um, to really prepare some questions. Um, there's no silly questions. Um, and Jason has a breadth of knowledge in this space. So please feel free to ask at any point. Um, there is a chat function in the Zoom call. So please feel free to post your questions in there. I will be monitoring that um, chat function and asking those questions throughout the presentation. And then we can have more of a dialogue at the end if there's anything else you guys wanna touch on. Um, Again, Jason brings many roles to Hansberger Physio Plus, um, but what I'm really excited about is he has been with us almost 20 years, which is absolutely incredible. Um, I do believe he'll be, uh, this year is number 18 for him. Um, so it's great to have Jason on the team. And without further ado, I am going to pass things over to you, Jason. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I just want to show my face first, but I'm gonna take myself off video. So you guys are gonna be focused on the slides more than my face. So we all know about ergonomics, uh, companies deal with it time and time again, but we have a different strategy here at Hansberger Physio because many companies are constantly struggling, uh, struggling with this term ergonomics. Uh, there's time and time again, when we get called um, to deal with a situation where, you know, somebody's having some issues at their workstation and they've gone through a checklist of sort and they're still struggling. So. What we wanted to do in this presentation is to kind of bring some control back to the clients, to you, so that you guys can help yourself and, and, and not be in pain in the process. So that's why we kind of term the word ergonomic balance. So here's a, a question I ask of you. So being a certified athletic therapist, yeah, I'm working with a lot of uh, athletes with various levels. And would you think that an athlete maybe like a downhill skier, a golfer, or even like a race car driver. How is that similar to ergonomics and sitting at a workstation? Well, by the end of this presentation, I hope you'll see that it's actually uh, very similar. And that's why we termed the word ergonomic balance. It's not just about balance at your workstation, but also there has to be some accountability in terms of balance, in terms of your postural health. So this is where we can take control of our own health and, and how we can manage our workstations more effectively if we actually create a balance between two, these two dynamics. So ergonomics is basically just the study of people's efficiency in their working environment. Now, why ergonomics is so important is we, every day we use our muscles, we uh, our body parts to lift, carry, sit, stand, walk, move, work, we're dynamic, but over time, repetitive tasks and uh, the variety of movements that we put on our bodies can really lead to a breakdown if we don't manage it effectively. And that's what leads to pain and discomfort. So we can go to the next slide. 
So our company as a whole is all about taking control of your health so that you feel better, that you live better. And so this is what we're all about, helping you feel better, live better, perform better, and then essentially with this topic, work better. Now, people don't realize when, when we feel pain, that's actually a sign that something's wrong. It's almost like, take for instance, um, when you're driving in a car, you see the engine light on. Well, most of us wouldn't just continue driving if we see an engine light on, we know something's wrong because there's a signal that's telling us something's wrong. Well, that's exactly what pain is. And most of the times we get so caught, off, caught on with our day-to-day -day tasks and work demands that every little maybe lingering pain is not really taken care of. And then it kind of leads to other problems and manifests itself into what we call musculoskeletal disorders. So this is when things get really bad is when there's an actual breakdown occurring. And so you'll see time and time again, people sitting at their workstations and they're dealing with carpal tunnel syndrome, which is kind of effectively a neurological impingement at the wrist, uh, various tendinitis issues, rotator cuff issues, you know, um, whether it's around the shoulder or the elbow. Um, sometimes it can be really bad within the fingers themselves and you can lead to inflammation and that can lead to trigger finger, which is another syndrome. And then you also have various muscle aches and strains. And so what I, what I kind of termed as the, the acronym BAN is we can ban our pain if we look at some of the fundamentals of balance, adjustability, and neutrality. So when I say balance, I'm talking about work-life balance. Um, your alignment, is it balanced in terms of your postural alignment? Um, are you balancing the tasks that you're doing throughout the day? Um, adjustability, that I would just term the adjustability of your ergonomics at your workstations. Can things be adjusted uh, and fine-tuned to help you out? And then neutral, um, I really focus on body posture as being neutral. So throughout this whole presentation, we're talking about ergonomic balance, but it's really three big words that I want everyone to focus on. Balance, adjustable, neutral. So when we're looking at our body, those are three terms that I want you to kind of think about. And, and when we're designing your workstation and working with the, the peripherals of your workstation, these three um, things should also uh, be prevalent. And although, oh, sorry, Robin, if you can just go back, I just kind of, we made a point there. So although you may not have access to a proper desktop like your office, we can still make things work at your home offices. So we can move to the next slide. Now, our bodies are made to move. And unfortunately, it's not just the physical that gets affected when we sit very poorly. I mean, right now you've heard of several news studies that come across that saying that the sitting is the new smoking. And it's because when we sit a lot, we really do affect a, a lot of our dynamics, not just kind of our muscular health, but the way we breathe, our circulation. And, and a lot of these things can really impose on the body. So you can really have um, issues in regards to like foggy brain, some mental health issues. Um, you can have, you know, your regular musculoskeletal soreness, whether it's neck or shoulders or back, but you can also end up with problems over time if this is not addressed where you can have cardiovascular disease, um, you can have um, digestive issues because of um, restricted diaphragm. So this picture just shows you kind of what not to do and, and a person who sits more upright, how much better they look. And so that's, that's what we talk about the neutral body posture. If you're neutral, you're expending less energy and therefore you're less likelihood of um, sustaining an injury. I really have to uh, keep that in mind every time I'm sitting at my desk, even though I've given this presentation with Jason many, many times, I still need to remind myself about uh, neutral body. Um, so that's one thing I'm focusing on for this year. So the reason why companies call us out is because a lot of companies have their own checklists and you can find several checklists online. The one that we have listed here is just one example. Health Canada has their own checklist. And what these checklists are meant to do is kind of create a starting foundation. And, and, and they're very informative and very helpful. But um, what I want to bring to the table is that these checklists are not enough sometimes because, you know, each one of us have different posturings and, and, and body positions and, and different issues that we're dealing with. And sometimes the checklist alone are not going to help. And this is why we get called time and time again 
uh, because there's something else that's going on in the picture. So what I want to stress with these checklists is, and I know many have maybe followed um, a similar checklist, but use it as a foundation. It's not black and white. So um, it's not something where you everything's got to be in perfect position. But if you have something close to it, you're definitely on the right path, you know, and, and so things that where you're, you know, the checklist here where your thighs should be parallel to the floor, feet flat, um, upper body in neutral position, back supported, all of these things are very important. And we're going to actually go through um, specifics uh, moving ahead. So let's look at your chair. I would say the chair is one of the most important features of a workstation. Um, you know, whether you're sitting in a car, um, sitting in front of a computer, um, sitting health is very important. So um, what it's important to remember is, is that you want to adjust the height of your chair so that your elbows stay neutral. And so what I mean by neutral, it's a 90-90 kind of direction. Everything should remain relaxed and in a 90 degree fashion. So just as you see the check mark there, there's a, a gentleman who's sitting at his desk and has full back support from the chair. And you can see his elbows and wrists and shoulder kind of maintain that 90 degree angle. And so that's what we're aiming for. We don't wanna be the person that's next to it where he's leaning forward. So if you can't adjust the height of your chair uh, to get to that check mark fashion, then definitely use um, a cushion, or a small pillow or seat support to kind of raise yourself up to the height of the desk. Now, there are times when the desk and the chair don't match correctly, and that's where you may find that you're sitting proper and you're in the right position, but your feet are dangling in the air. And that's when you need uh, a proper foot rest to make sure that your feet stay flat on the floor. Um, your thighs should be parallel to the floor. Um, and then a very important part of this is the back of your knee should be clear. So what I mean by that is there should be about a three to two to three, four we, uh, finger width between the actual seat edge and the back of your knee. Um, you have arteries, and, you know, um, arteries and nerves that run through the back of the knee. And you don't want to compromise that because that can really restrict the blood flow as well as neurological supply and can lead to problems down the feet and even, and even up to the back. So you want to make sure that there's a clearance there. And then the other thing I find with chairs, and this is where I get most of my questions come and where they come from, is that everyone thinks that you have to get the the top of the line chair. And I can tell you right now, I've seen top of the line chairs fail just as much <laughs> as any other chair. I think what's very important is that you do get a sense of full back support that you see with the check mark in individual. That you can see his whole spine is com comfortably supported. And so if you don't feel that, and many chairs have kind of a curvature to their upper back, well, that's where we suggest putting a back support. Um, now, if you don't have a footrest with you, and you know, especially now with lockdown, it's hard to kind of shop around, then some of the hacks you can use is you can use a phone book or a package of printer paper to put under your feet, at least temporarily. Um, and if you don't have a backrest and you feel like you need some additional support through your back, then why not put a pillow or roll up a small towel so that you're, you're getting a little bit more padded support through your spine and you can always just tape it in place. Uh, I mean, no one's gonna see you. So, um, you know, especially if you're at a virtual meet, no one can actually see you with these hacks in place. So um, I think some good suggestions um, that you can take into account. Your work surface, now the thing with the work surface, there has to be adequate space, okay? So I find that a lot of people don't have enough space and, and, and everything just gets too complicated. I, I really do like minimizing what's on your workspace. And, and the way I like setting up my workspace is Whatever I use most, which is my keyboard, my mouse, maybe my phone, those things are coming closer to me. You almost have to treat yourself like a pilot sitting at a cockpit. Most of the main instrumentation is actually closer to them, the things that they use time and time again. The things that are not, uh, well, I would say, readily in need, they're kind of pushed a little bit away so that the pilot can just lean forward or shift to the side. And it's the same thing with our workspace. We want to make sure that everything's kind of situated around us so that we're not overreaching or, or shifting our body weight improperly. 
you know, and so we want to make sure that our elbows stay relaxed by our sides. Um, just as you can see in the picture, whether you're sitting or standing, um, this all comes into play. Um, you want to make sure that everything feels relaxed. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky in ergonomics because a lot of times people say, well, do I need to rest myself on my chair? Um, as you see the picture is shown above. Um, and there are uh, times where people don't feel that's comfortable. Uh, maybe they have some elbow issues. And so they prefer to have the rest that you see there for the wrist. My thing is, is this is where a little bit of trial comes into play. The thing is, whatever resting pad you're using, you want to make sure that you're not overly resting on these pads. So I've seen a lot of cases where, you know, you're situated correctly, but there's a lot of heavy lean on the armrests. So I would prefer almost taking the armrests out of the equation and just giving the person proper back support and then utilizing a wrist support as seen. So there's a little bit, this is why I was saying it's not black and white. There has to be a little bit of trial. And sometimes, you know, this is where servicing a, another viewpoint through a therapist or, or a virtual consult can help. But in essence, the desk space should be um, minimal, but um, productive. And if we are standing, it's always good to have some type of cushion mat um, under our feet uh, to prevent fatigue. Um, but the other thing I like to bring up is this whole trend of sit to stand workstations. I think sometimes we get caught off that, you know, we can sit at our desks for longer periods of time and just raise our desk up and down and just still stay in the situation we're in. Um, there's a good point we've made that no more than 60 minutes at a time. Sometimes I would even drop it down to 30 minutes at a time at one position, whether you're sitting or standing and varying uh, between those two positions. Um, practical tips that we say is if you don't have any uh, supports on hand, you can use folded dish towels or some small sponges in place. Um, and even for a cushion mat, if you don't have an anti-fatigue mat, um, you can use a yoga mat or a folded towel. That's great. And I guess too, for me, Jason, I don't have a sit to stand workstation. Um, but what I really try to do for myself regularly um, is to take breaks. Um, so like you said, to vary up that body position every 30 minutes, if it's possible for me, um, I really try to do that as well. So that's a great suggestion. If uh, a sit to stand workstation isn't um, in your budget, or it just doesn't work for the space you have. Would you agree with that? I would agree because there's a lot of people who move into a sit to stand workstation and still end up having the same issues, regardless of position. And it really just comes down to just taking the breaks, even just stepping away from your workstation for about two, three minutes, conducting a few stretch breaks, and then heading back into work makes a world of difference. And I think that's one of the, the biggest key takeaways that we've seen recently. We've seen a number of inquiries from our clients about sit to stand workstations and asking us to procure one for them and helping them with install. And we always say, whoa, 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 let's hold the brakes here. Um, while the sit to stand workstation might be the right call, let's, let's go back to the basics and assess the workstation that you have before making all those adjustments and make sure, making sure that any adjustments are actually right for you and your body. So I think that's one of the biggest things is a lot of people think the standing workstation will solve all the problems, um, but it's really important to go back to the basics and assess the whole workstation before making any changes. I agree. Now for our keyboard and mouse, another question that we see a lot of is in terms of, do I need a keyboard tray? Do I not need a keyboard tray? Again, it comes down to positioning, how you're sitting. And this is why I think the chair becomes very fundamental. I would honestly say getting the proper chair is your first kind of big first point that you should be making. Because once you're set up correctly in your chair, that's when you design all the other peripherals and desk height and everything around you. So when it comes to keyboard and mouse, uh, again, the pictures tell the, the tale. We don't want different angles. Now, we we tend to think that we get carpal tunnel just from kind of one portion of our wrist. But technically speaking, if, if our wrists are sitting slightly up or even down, we can create compromise in that space from the anterior or posterior aspect of that wrist. So I think it's very important that we maintain this neutral line as shown, the correct as they call it. 
Um, you got to make sure that everything just stays neutral. And again, one of the things I like to tell people is sometimes people struggle with how do I know if it is neutral or correct? One of the best things I tell people to do is just put yourself in that position, close your eyes for a second and just feel the tension that you feel. Sometimes if you're in the right position, things will just actually feel relaxed. Um, a lot of shoulder problems especially come from the improper use of a mouse or how, um, how you're using the mouse. And there's a great picture that uh, Robin has put on the slide for us with the X and the check mark, where a lot of shoulder problems usually tend uh, to happen because of the compromise of space, just because of the rotated angle. So again, if we just keep ourselves a little bit more in line and not so externally rotated, uh, we can really help our bodies out. Keep everything within reach, as we just said. Monitor height, another big one. Now, I'm going to have to jump on laptops for a second with this one. Um, actually, for the past few weeks, I've seen a few people tend to use their laptops as their monitor. In the best of worlds, I would actually stray away from that. I mean, if you can actually have an ext a proper external monitor, um, it really does help with eye fatigue and keeping your neck in that neutral position. And, and I, I always say it, once you go back to a big screen, it's very hard to go back to your laptop screen. Now, there are hacks that we can, that we'll be talking to you about, but in the best of worlds, external monitor. But in saying that, when we have our monitors in front of us, we gotta make sure that it's not too close, too far. If we're not, um, if we don't have any prescription um, eyeglasses, then it makes it a little bit easier. But the general rule of thumb is just when you're sitting into the back of your chair, the, the monitor should be arm's length away and that your kind of eyebrow kind of area hits the top line of the monitor so you know you're in the right position. Um, if you are wearing prescriptive eyeglasses, then the angles will vary such where um, because your line of sight is going to be kind of drawn downwards. And so you would have to tilt the monitor as such. Um, but that's what I would say about monitors. The other thing I, um, we can move is, yeah, perfect. So this is where uh, another question is if we're dealing with two, um, a dual monitor setup, the best of worlds is to basically have the position there where we see almost a 50-50 approach where your line of sight hits between the two monitors. And again, it, very similar. If you look at that picture, it almost mimics um, a cockpit screen uh, in terms of how they're looking at um, things. Now, depending if uh, depending on your usage of the screen, if you're kind of an 80-20 user, then of course the, the position will vary. Um, but keep in mind that if you're in this position here, like for example, where we have a 70-30 split and you have one monitor towards the left, uh, the left side. Make sure that at times you can move that monitor over to the other side. It's almost like you shift so that you're not always tending to rotate one direction. Again, talk about balance, adjustability. This is where it comes into play. And so um, just make sure that you place the monitors as such, place that secondary monitor on the dominant eye. But again, it's all about balance. Um, again, we talked about the working laptop situation. There's a great picture there for you. Most of the times, laptops were never meant to be desktop items. They're really for travel purposes. And so even though using a riser is a great strategy, again, I would still push towards uh, using external monitor over that. But again, if that's, if that's not feasible or not in budget, then of course the laptop riser will work. Now, if you don't have a laptop riser, what do you do? Well, you can definitely use practical tips. Uh, you can use packages of computer paper, cardboard boxes. I know Robin has a picture of her with a little hack there on the next slide. Well, maybe yeah. further, but we'll definitely get right, we'll to that. We'll get to that. So basically, now the phone. I, how many times I've seen people try to multitask and put their phone onto the side of their head? Well, th this diagram pretty much tells the tale. Look at the spine and just that that overflexion to one side. I mean, the best thing to do is to use a headset um, or just try to hold it in hand. Um, use a speaker phone from your phone if possible. 
we just have to stray away from shifting our heads in such a way. We can really do damage if we, especially if we already have tension surrounding our cervical and upper shoulders, all it takes is for one wrong side flexion like that and we can impinge a nerve and really cause some problems. So that's just maybe a thing to keep in mind. Um, also with your phone, just make sure that if you're, if you're using your phone a lot, um, make sure that that is, as I mentioned, close up to you so you're not overreaching to pick up your phone. And here. the next one, yep, here's Robin. So, <laughs> so you can see here, if, if I would say, is this the best scenario possible? No, but it's absolutely much better than where she was before. And so that little hack has really made a difference. You can really see, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is actually not too far from the truth, Robin. <laughs> Oh, I know everyone. I'm the worst culprit, and that's why I'm so. We are all we are all culprits of this. So you know, again, but we have to be mindful of our position. And so this hack of using a um, an Amazon box and just using a, a headset, and she has a peripheral mouse and keyboard, really has made a big difference. Like this, this is almost like an eighty percent uh, improvement to where she was before. And. I can honestly say um, the tension in my body, um, the the need for me to get um, consistent care because of pain um, has significantly uh, diminished. Now I'm not just saying that because I'm a member of the Hansberger team and I have uh, access to great resources, um, but this has truly made a huge difference um, in the way that I work, especially going from working in the office every day um, to, to moving home and not really knowing when I'm going back. So um, for me, this was an absolute game changer and it didn't cost me anything. I had all of these tools at home already. Now, one of the uh, things before we jump into posture is one of the questions I also get with uh, keyboards is, um, most of the times we find ourselves using a full keyboard. I know Apple and some other companies have designed keyboards where you're using a smaller base and um, where you don't have the numeric um, addition to it on, on the side. In the best of worlds, I, I really do like the, um, the keyboards that are a lot more slimmer and more um, slimline in terms of their width um, and length because um, it allows your mouse to come closer to you um, again, that's the best of worlds. So um, again, this is this is why I find it a little bit tricky to, you know, this is why companies face a lot of problems just going by a checklist because yeah, you, you do everything according to the checklist and it still needs a second eye on the on the equation. So we'll get to some other strategies moving forward. But here comes the big one. So we talked about ergonomic balance. So we've talked about kind of ergonomics and things that we can do at our workstations to how best support ourselves. But now the second part of the equation, which many people kind of forget about is your posture. I know, you know, we've heard about our moms and dads reminding us about our posture. And I cannot stress how important this is, especially this day and age where we are caught up in front of our technology um, equipment. Uh, we need to make sure that our posture is in check. And I love this diagram because a lot of people think that they have good posture when in essence, what you see may not be reality. You know, we, we think we're standing up nice and tall uh, and in essence, we're actually all kyphotic and hunched over. One of the best things to do for this for yourselves at home is um, to have a family member take a photo of you um, while you're standing, while you're you're working, um, because it'll really give you a great impression on what's actually happening over time. And, and try to do it not when you feel energetic and eager to work or eager to go do something. Try to see what happens when you're tired, um, the second half of your work day, that kind of thing. Because when we see people who are tired, um, we do see things that um, show through um, when our bodies um, are in need of a bit of a rest. Would you agree with that, Jason? I agree, Robin. So when we talk about posture, you know, what really kind of combats with us on a day-to-day -day basis is a lot of it is bad habits. You know, um, I've seen time and time again where we see clients, you know, we'll, we'll treat them, we'll get them up into up to speed, we condition them, 
but then they go back to some really bad habits uh, where they're not sleeping correctly or just not utilizing the technology like phones and so forth and hunched over sitting at in front of a laptop, um, even just driving all kind of contorted. These things need to stop because our bodies are kind of like a history book and, and, and it almost like you have this hologram and your body's going to be kind of used to this way of thinking, if I can explain. So the more you do this, the more your body's just going to be forced to develop these habits and your whole fascial system will just build into this. And this is where we end up with people with various postures, which you'll see on the next slide. You'll have people, and so this is a great depiction of different postures that we've seen. And the, the normal good posture is where you can draw a line from your ear to your shoulder, to your hip, and to your ankle, as shown. And there's various kind of dysfunctions that we see where we lead to sway back, where you just uh, kind of a leaning approach. Uh, lumbar lordosis is where you have such an ex uh, exaggerated curve of your low back. And thoracic kyphosis is just an exaggerated curve of your upper back. Either way, both of these usually tend to lead to the next posture, which is that forward head posture. So um, again, this kind of posturing over time will just lead to kind of um, a progressive overuse of those postural muscles in a way where the body starts to fatigue and then you start leading to breakdown. I think I'm in one of those postures right now. So I bring this por uh, portion up and the reason I bring this up is because time again, I've seen people sitting at their workstation and they're, you know, they're set up correctly, but again, they're spending long hours a day in front of their computers. And again, just the nature of the beast, it just, you'll lead to de deconditioning just because of the static posturing. And so what I find is people will, you know, engage in some type of yoga or some other um, weight bearing or weight resistive exercises and they and what they do is they start doing exercises that they think are helpful but in fact they're actually leading kind of falling in the wrong direction so what I mean by that is when we sit in front of our computers the way we're designed in front of our computers a lot of all the muscles on the front side of our bodies our chest and our hip flexors and thighs and all the muscles from the front end start to get very tight very tight and restricted because Again, it's almost like the pull, everything that's happening is in front of us. I wish we could be almost like a Terminator and swing things around, uh, but, in, uh, but unfortunately that's not the case. So when the muscles in front of us get so tight, all the muscles from the back end start to weaken. And this is what we call the upper and lower cross syndrome. And so I bring this up because for example, let's say your chest is tight. And then I see a lot of people saying, well, I'm conditioning and I'm doing a lot of push-ups to strengthen my muscles. but you almost have to think about the conditioning you're doing to help offset the demands that are happening to you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's different if you're, you know, for example, a teacher standing, moving around, then sure, definitely build some strength in your chest. But I would not be doing push-ups, for example, if I've been sitting in front of a computer eight, nine hours a day, I know my pecs are gonna be extremely tight. They need a lot more stretching, and then you really need more conditioning on the backside to help support the, um, again, reason why our upper traps and all start to get so tight. So I just wanted to bring that to play. Now, the reason why our bodies break down, this is actually a physio model. Um, and it, it really is very simplified, but very effective in understanding where breakdowns happen. So every part of our bodies are meant to either be stable or mobile. And when, when things don't move in that pattern, that's when things start to break down. And again, that's another reasoning why we need to stand up and move. Because if we sit a lot for a day, for example, if we look at this diagram right now, you'll see, so your ankles should be mobile. Your knees are more on the stability group. And then the next point above is your hips, where it should be kind of mobile. But if we're sitting for eight, nine hours a day, and not getting up as we're, we were meant to do, you know your hips are now going to start moving from a mobility role to a stability role, meaning that things are going to get tight and stiff. And that's what changes this dynamic around. And that's when you start having people ending up with back pain or knee pain, and they, and they don't know where it's coming from. It's because this model, um, the pattern has been broken down. 
Now, Robin put this slide up. I think this is important, especially in respects to mental health. When we stand up and we are in good health and things are going well in life and, and our posture is good, overall, our health is better. We feel better. We even communicate better and we look better. You know, how many times when people have good posture, you'll get a lot of like positive reinforcement. Oh, you look great today. You just look so energetic. Um, it, your whole body is just in a different again, you just feel better. When we're all slouched and circulation is poor, we're not breathing well, and we, we end up with all sorts of ailments, as I mentioned, you might get you know, some attentive disorders, maybe digestion starts to break down, shoulders are achy. You know, we don't feel good about ourselves, and, and it shows. So I, I like that Robin put this slide up, especially now in regards to the mental health focus that we, are all, uh, that we all need to focus on. This, this plays a big role. Robin, did you want to take care of this one? Yeah, this one really speaks to me. Um, and I don't know about most of you what your jobs are, but I am desk bound most of the day. Um, so for me, I've really had to try to find ways to become more productive, move more. Um, so the first one is, is very easy for all of us to do. Um, while you're on conference calls, as long as you're not presenting um, and it's not disruptive to the group, um, get up stand up, walk around if possible, even doing things like just stepping back from your desk and standing while on the conference call. If you really want to get adventurous, add in a few squats or a few lunges, you know what I mean? Really just try to stay moving. Movement is medicine. And I truly believe that. Um, a simple way to adjust your body into a better posture is to imagine a string attached to the top of your head towards the back of your skull. That string is being pulled gently towards the sky. I'm actually doing it right now. Um, the pull of the string lifts your chest, which will align your lower back, shoulders, head and neck. Um, to remind yourself to do this occasionally, put a sticky note on your monitor or somewhere visible on your desk with the word string. When you see it, you'll remind yourself to sit back up. And, and that's also movement. So even if you're not able to stand necessarily, moving your body into a better posture is always going to help out. Scheduling body breaks and stretching, key, key, key. Um, there's lots of stretches we can actually do from our workstation. You don't even have to get up necessarily. So we're gonna take you through a few of those as well. Um, wearing blue light glasses while you work, um, depending on your exposure to the screen um, is a great idea. Um, and resting your eyes. Um, so periodically looking at objects for several seconds at a distance to give your eyes a break. So what I mean by that is while you're on a conference call or after 30 minutes of continuous work, simply look to the left or the right um, and focus on something that's not a digital screen to give your eyes a bit of a break. If you can sit by a window, um, I know it's not all possible depending on where we're working these days, um, but sitting by a window to get the natural light and vitamin D um, will be a big mood booster, but also stay hydrated. Um, setting up a challenge with your colleagues or your coworkers um, to drink eight glasses of water a day. Um, there's many different things we could do to make it fun and competitive, um, but still staying healthy. I think the one thing I would add, Robin, is the in regards, I love the point that you made about the focusing of the eyes. Um, a lot of research, especially from the optometry perspective, has talked about, our, again, our, our eyes are almost like lenses in a camera. They're meant to kind of focus in and out. And you usually see disturbances happen when things are too stagnant. So giving yourself a break means also periodically allowing your eyes to focus. So look at something far and then look at something near away from the screen it can really help your eyes kind of move. As I said before, our bodies are dynamic and so are our eyes. So if things are not moving and things get stagnant, it's just like water. If you think about a, a, a river that's moving very briskly versus just kind of stagnant water, you know which one is more healthy. So now I think it's time to practice what we preach a little bit, Jay, and get people moving. How about that? Yeah, so, so what I'll do is, Robin, if you can just show them the picture and I'll take them through the exercises. Absolutely. So the first one, a great stretch, especially our upper backs. You know, we, we are sitting a lot and there's a lot of compressive load on the spine through the day. And so again, 
when we take you through these exercises, please keep in mind that anything that causes pain, um, take it to heart. It may be that you're not doing it correctly or something else may just not be working for you. And this is when you need professional guidance. Uh, but these are some very simple exercises that you can do right um, at your desk. Not that we really want you to just remain seated. Um, by all means, you can do a lot of these exercises in standing. Uh, but this one is called thoracic extension, really to open up the spine. And basically what we do is we just sit upright in our chair with our back fully supported. And then we clasp our hands together, as you see. And then you move your arms up towards the ceiling. And as you do that, you kind of lean back over the back support of the chair. Now, again, it's not that you overarch. It's just a slight lean back to kind of get a little bit of a stretch through your rib cage and uh, upper body. Um, your palms should face in towards one another. And you just hold that position for a few seconds, take a deep breath maybe, and then return to the start position and repeat. I always recommend doing this a few times, not just once. Um, I like to do dynamic stretches where you're actually moving into a position and then coming out of it and then moving into it again, as, suppo as opposed to just holding on to a static prolonged stretch over a period of time. Now, if you have trouble doing that because of the chair you have, um, because again, sometimes the tilt of the chair does not allow for it, uh, feel free to even stand up and do the same stretch. The only difference here is that instead of having the hands, uh, the hands over you, you would basically stand upright and just grasp your hands from behind you and just kind of lift your arms a little bit away from you so that you can feel a stretch, a stretch through the shoulders. I like that one too. That one's a nice one. So this one is called a pelvic tilt. And I think the best approach to make this easy, it's not actually kind of tilting your pelvis. I think some people kind of try to keep their upper body so still and try to rock their pelvis. And, and that's not kind of what this is. This is, again, a really kind of a yoga minded, full body type of approach. So in this position, you're just sitting upright in your chair. Um, your knees are just slightly lower than your hips, feet flat on the floor. And then you place your hands on your hips and just go into kind of a slump position with your weight. So you kind of just pretend you're all slumped forward. And so that you kind of feel it right down to your tailbone. But then you just gradually roll yourself up from your tailbone until kind of your weight is lifted up. So you're kind of going into your what I call the most slump position possible, and then just coming right out of it. And again, you can even have your hands lifted up overhead if you want. Um, but this is a great exercise to just create some mobility through the, the lumbar spine and pelvis. You could also do that. It's similar to a cat dog um, for any of you who are yes. uh, practicing yoga. So it can also be done on the ground on all fours um, as well, if that's something you're comfortable with. Now with this one, um, I'm gonna just kind of, so this is a great exercise for somebody who is quite active. Um, what I would always like to do is start with two legs. So sitting to stand in two legs and kind of getting a good frame of reference there before moving to this single leg stance. But basically this is kind of like a mini squat. And um, basically you're, if you look at the first picture there with her having the two feet on the floor, I would always start with that and just kind of get into a standing position and then squat back down and just learn to understand the mechanics of your hip and strength of the legs before you move into a single leg stance. But basically you just sit upright on a stool so that your hips are higher in your knees. You bring your buttocks to the edge of the stool as she's done. And you lift your foot off the ground and keep it in front of you and try to stand up with your legs one at a time. Um, really, in essence, again, it's just trying to establish some strength through the legs because these legs, if they're not moving throughout the day, um, they're gonna get very stiff and sore. So um, technically speaking, if you are already getting up from your seat um, every half hour, every 15 minutes, then you're already accomplishing this exercise without making it too complex. Um, you know, I would kind of kind of do the double leg approach. And as well, if you wanted to progress um, and start off with holding a counter or a railing um, to practice this, this would also that would also be a good progression before going to no hands for anybody who wants to kind of give that a go. 
Now, this is one of my favorite exercises, actually, because it's very dynamic. It really kind of tells a lot. I use this as even a postural assessment. But basically, what you're doing is just trying to put your back right up against the, the, the wall and if trying to put your spine there. But if you find that you're kind of arched away from the wall, you can simply just move your legs further away from the wall with your knees slightly bent. And basically, your shoulders and head should be touching the wall. Um, and you just start with your arms by your side with the elbow bent and your wrist and forearms uh, will, should be touching the, um, the wall as you see in the picture there, the second uh, from the top. However, you'll find that people who are very stiff, they may not be able to get into this position very easily. So you may find that your feet are gonna come a little bit further away from the wall than necessary, that's okay. But essentially what you wanna do do is just try to maintain that posture as best as possible. And just, it's almost like kind of doing a little bit of a game. You wanna see if you can raise your arms slightly higher without your back coming off the wall. And when you feel that happening, that's where you stop and you just bring it back down. So it's it's really kind of a, kind of a, a mini game that I do to see how often you can do this and you can repeat it 10, 20 times uh, at one position. And last but not least. So chin tucks. This is where we try to create a double chin for all of us that we love so much. <laughs> but um, basically, this can be done sitting or standing. And the essence of this exercise is not to jerk the neck. I see a lot of people try to really push hard and retracting their neck. This is a very gentle exercise. Again, we just want to ease the tension, especially from those posterior muscles of the neck. So. We try to stand straight or sit straight. You look ahead and just place two fingers on your chin and almost think of a, a rope running from behind the head through the, through the chin to the finger and somebody's kind of pulling the chin backwards. So even though your fingers are there in front, it's almost like you wanna feel like somebody's tugging your head slightly so that you're being pulled slightly back so that you're creating a little chin tuck. And, and it's a very subtle exercise. You, you just wanna feel a little bit of a dissipation and, and stretch on the backside. And you can kind of focus on your breathing. You hold for a few seconds and relax. And I would repeat it again, 10, 20 times um, as, as the session allows, um, but a very gentle stretch, not something where you're jerking or cranking on your neck. That's not the purpose of this exercise. Now, with ergonomics, this is where I come back to that checklist. Well, this is where, you know, Robin and I, we have the experience in ergonomics now to tell you that there are a lot of tools to really elevate your game. So, you know, let's say you have a chair, you spent some good amount of dollars on your chair and you, and you uh, need that backrest. Well, there you have an obus form backrest. We have now a new device called the back friend, which is a portable device that can actually be used in your chair as well as in your car, which is something that the obus form um, doesn't really work well. You know, when I talk about ergonomics, um, we should also be thinking about driving because there are people um, that are logged in today that might be semi working from home and also still spending time at their office and maybe driving a fair distance. So um, I really do think that looking at your car seat is just as important as your work seat. But there's a lot of other tools for postural management. So um, again, this is where you may need the help of a postural, uh, sorry, a professional to help you with kind of which postural tools to use. But we have a great tool such as what we call the posture arch um, to really help stretch out the spine. You know, when we sit for prolonged periods of time, the ligaments of our spine get really tight and simply foam rollering can help for some. But then again, how about the foam roller uh, doesn't work out. Well, again, we have various strategies to help massage out these muscles and stretch out the spine accordingly. We have great devices that you see in picture uh, for postural support. Um, lately, I've noticed a lot of people just holding a lot of tension. You know, they're doing the best they can, but they still, they get caught up in their, their, their virtual meets um, and, and they just forget about their postural awareness. So we have things like the Posture Medic and the Posture Shirt, which is a fabulous device that I've been um, just people are raving about, uh, which really works on your kind of your fascial grid. So for example, a lot of people will go for a little bit of massage, physiotherapy, uh, chiropractic, but how do you sustain those changes? Again, we need our bodies to register a new norm. 
Your body, if for example, you've been sitting in poor posture for a long period of time, your body's kind of set on one hologram and it needs to be shifted to a new dynamic. And these kind of tools can really help to kind of aid. They're not braces, they're actually sensory aids to help build postural support. Um, another tool that you see on the top there is called a contour roller mouse. So one issue that you see a lot is somebody who's dealing with wrist or elbow or shoulder issues, primarily on the dominant side, the side that they use their mouse. And a lot of times you'll see people try to just shift their mouse onto the left side, but that can create complications too. So this device is a, another tool that we can use to kind of create um, a mousing pro, a kind of using your mouse, but where both extremities are being used um, in a balanced form. And again, I wouldn't recommend buying a tool like this right off the bat, but again, this is why we do virtual assessments on people to kind of fine tune things and give them the added bonus to kind of elevate their game. So all of this stuff has been fantastic, Jason. Um, and we really just wanted to summarize things for the group today. Um, first and foremost, taking care of your physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual health is so critical, um, especially in the time that we're in right now. But really the biggest component of that um, relating to the physical side is being mindful and paying attention to your body. So if something doesn't feel right, get it checked out. Movement is medicine, stay active. A big part of this as well as eating a balanced diet, um, but also really focusing on mobility. Uh, those five exercises that Jason went over are a great thing to try to build into your day. Maybe start by doing it once over your lunch hour. Um, if you're really feeling adventurous, maybe try and doing it twice during the day. It's really about building out these um, tips and these, these um, habits that you're going to carry on, uh, carry forward. Drinking enough water is critical. Taking breaks often and stretching often. Um, those are two of the biggest things that we can do for ourselves. Vary your activities during the day, sitting, standing, walking around while on, on a conference call, whatever works best for you, um, but, but really try to vary your activities during the day. And that doesn't mean going from the couch to the island um, and then sitting at the kitchen table. Really focus on where you're working and how you're working. Seek out the help of a professional instead of using the internet to self-diagnose. We all tend to try to do that. Um, WebMD is not our best friend. Um, it, it's really critical, especially from um, the physical side as of things to get help from a professional. When in doubt, have it checked out. Um, and have an ongoing maintenance plan, um, whatever that means for you, whether that's um, going to see a personal trainer, a kinesiologist, a registered massage therapist, physiotherapist, chiropractor, you name it, but really make sure that you're taking care of your body and you're having things checked out. It's just like going to the doctor for your annual physical. Um, you really want to make sure that your body's moving the way it should be as you age. And most importantly, be accountable. Um, that, that's sort of one of my biggest focuses for this year is being accountable. Um, so I think uh, that, that kind of sums up a lot of it. Um, again, this is a great slide, just really highlighting those, those top five. Um, getting proper sleep is also one that's super, super important. Um, I was actually reading a... Uh, an email um, from uh, a friend today and, and just talking about sleep is when we recover the most. So if you've had an injury or you're doing more activity than you normally do, getting proper sleep is really going to help uh, take care of that. So the question I posed at the beginning of the session, I said that how does ergonomics and an athlete's directive kind of like, what are the similarities? And I said like a downhill skier, um, a golfer, even a race car driver. So let's take a race car driver, for example, just to make it simplified. It's exactly the same as what we've talked about. A race car driver makes sure that their workstation, which is their car itself, is in its utmost balanced state alignment. Everything's in top form. But at the same time, they also take great care of their own health, their posture, hydration, sleep, all the things that we've talked about to essentially balance out the two. And the best of the, the athletes do that. They rely on their equipment just as much as they put accountability on themselves. And this is why I pose that question. It's, it really is very similar to an athletic directed mindset. And that's what we have to think about. What athletes do is they take control of their health. 
And that's what we can all do if we take these points into play. And last but not least, um, before we let you go today, and if there's any questions, we can definitely answer those as well. Um, but we are giving a special offer to anybody who is uh, registered for this webinar today. Um, so that's a virtual ergonomic assessment. So that includes a biomechanical movement screen. We're going to look at your posture. We're going to look at your workstation, all in real time, all virtual. Um, we will then provide a recommendation report. And we also offer discounted rates for any workstation enhancements that you may May need. Um, so we for, forged special partnerships um, with various vendor partners for chairs, desks, laptop razors, monitors, you name it, um, whatever you need, we can get it for you and we can beat the price of staples and things like that. So just keep that in mind. Regularly, a virtual ergonomic assessment is 150, um, but for the people who have registered for this webinar, it is now $100. So that's a $50 savings. And this offer is valid until the end of February. If you're interested in redeeming this offer, my email is below, robyn at hansbergerphysio.com and simply put webinar offer in the subject and I will be happy to give you more information or chat with you further on how this can help benefit your workstation. Big thank you to Jason for taking the time out of his night tonight to share with us all of these knowledge bites. Um, and big thank you to the New Market Public Library for organizing this and Rob for being such a generous host. Now I will open up um, the line for any questions. I know we've taken a lot of your time this evening. Um, Jason's email is here if there's anything else you wanna follow up on. Um, I don't think I see any questions. Hopefully that means that we've answered everything that you guys were wondering about. Um, and with that in mind, um, we wish you all a great evening and uh, we appreciate your time and hope you stay safe and uh, make it through the winter. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jason and Robin, and thanks, everybody, for coming. And um, we'll go ahead and end the meeting now. Bye.